a few things are missing, um, with uh, uh, the key one of those being safety. It's cold. It's yeah. bloody cold. They can go through days, weeks, without speaking to anybody at all, without having a single conversation, without looking, being able to look anybody else in the eye because they become so disassociated. For Australia's homeless, daily life is a struggle. But for a brief period of time, a self-governing homeless community blossomed, providing a safe space for Sydney's rough sleepers, Tent City. It offered food, 24 hours a day, nutritious food. And it broke the isolation. Yeah. And I guess a lot of people don't really think about when they think about homeless people. Unfortunately, as an unpleasant eyesore in the heart of the CBD, the government introduced vague public safety laws to tear down Tent City and stop groups of people camping in the streets. We spoke with the founders of Tent City to understand the consequences of these new laws. These laws, they could potentially apply to these two guys sitting over here on the statue. The police could determine that they're camping here. Now that within two weeks of Tent City being pulled down, yeah. one of the residents who, who is also ex-military got severely bashed in Hyde Park um, at five o'clock in the morning. Um, he required 180 stitches. You know? And that is a direct consequence of Tent City not being here. Things are looking pretty dire for Sydney's homeless, but surprisingly, we stumbled upon a group of rough sleepers who were somehow exempt from the new laws. So, why are you here on the street tonight? Um, waiting in line for the new iPhone X. Yeah. I'm here to get the iPhone X. My mission is to get the iPhone 10. For the iPhone 10 release, yeah. the line goes three blocks back that way. Have you had any trouble from the from the council or the state government coming down, trying to clear you out? Um, not really. No, they can't move you if you're sitting here in front of the store. Yeah. They can't do anything? They won't do anything. Regardless of those laws, I guess as long as you're sitting here buying the iPhone, it's, it's fine, right? But... Yeah, it's completely fine. As soon as the doors hit 8am, every single Apple employee up there is uh, clapping and cheering. So it's like, it's a pretty good experience. And they're like, yay, you made it. <laughs> So everybody will be happy, it's the iPhone X, it's the first one. Like people are going to be ecstatic about it. Yeah. It's uh, definitely a big accomplishment when you like finally get into the Apple Store. Do you reckon this I don't know, gives you an understanding of what it's like to be homeless? or? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously to an extent because like what we've got, we've got tents. Because there's a tent there, there's everybody, yeah, it gives you a sense of having that feeling of being homeless and that. Yeah. I've been homeless for 11 days, I made it. Definitely uncomfortable, but yeah. we have to do that. Definitely a lot of people try to mess with you. And suit walks by and goes, loser. The abuse is real, it's good for your ego, it beats you down and you become more centred as a human being. What would you do in, in, if like, a, I don't know, a homeless person comes down and tries to get in the line? Um, I would imagine myself being pretty upset. You try to ignore them as yeah. much as possible. Today I had a homeless guy sit down on my chair for like an hour and I was a little bit because my chair, my bag was right under the chair. It's the city, you're not really safe. What do you do if like, a, I don't know, like a homeless person comes up and tries to get, get into here? I don't know, like, because I reckon they're just unpredictable, so you just call the police. I guess you just like call the council or someone to... Something. I wouldn't try to mess around with them. Yeah. But yeah, they're scary nah. dudes. Fair enough. <laughs> I had a homeless guy ask if he could use my tent. Apple wants us here, so it's a little bit different. 